All right, let's get into this Tommy G video, man. I done, I done been edged by this video all day long, and I had this up, bro. This video is titled Inside the Deadly World of Mercenaries. What type of mission is they on? Drop your weapon, you right? Drop your weapon. You motherfucker. Tommy, we got captured, dude. Hello, folks. I'm Tommy G, and today we're training with mercenaries. What? Welcome to Redwater, oh, boys. Must have been a training this mission. is why I created Redwater. Uh, I wanted a place for all of us to feel like a family. You know, a lot of veterans, when they get out, and cops, when they retire, you know, they lose that brotherhood, and that's what I wanted. I wanted to build a brotherhood. Hey, I think I have that gun. They lose that brotherhood, and that's what I wanted. I got that exact gun. I wanted to build a brotherhood. I don't have that scope though. What? What the fuck? What the fuck? Hey! Hey! Do you like that? Give us the answers that we want! It's a skit! It's a skit! It's a skit! Hey, Motherfucker, give us answers now! Let's talk about mercenaries, guns for hire, soldiers of fortune, well, private this military. Hurt, this shit is hurting my head. Hold on, I'm actually gonna wear a hat over this dewey today. You know, put the, the bro, these these headphones actual poverty, my nigga. Yo, if any company out there wants to make wireless open back headphones, bro, please, my nigga, please, bro. Fuck, they won't even have to be open back, bro. They, I just don't want them bitches to be noise canceling. Noise canceling is a fucking cancer. I'm gonna let me get off this little rant, my nigga. This shit really been getting me tight. Noise canceling is a fucking cancer. All y'all niggas gonna have no eardrums by the time you're 50. You will need hearing aids. That shit is a cancer. I don't want no noise canceling, bruh. Miss me with all that noise canceling shit. I don't mind hearing my environment, bruh. Just make headphones for niggas that don't mind that. Come on. Contractors. These are some of the terms for guys that are paramilitary operatives and that if you need hired muscle, our muscle, these are the guys you call. The mercenary world is a deadly one and it's full of gray area. In the last few years, legal? some groups that come to mind when you think of mercenaries are the United States group Blackwater, now defunct, and Russian outfits like the Wagner Group. And these guys have reached all around the globe. Some newsworthy mercenary exploits include the following. In 2007, when a Blackwater convoy was involved in a highly controversial shootout in Iraq. In 2000. 21 when Colombian mercenaries were hired by a man. Wait, what the fuck is they doing in Iraq? <laughs> Why are they there? They're on military drills? Are you the police? Nah, there's big downsides to this. Ethiopia has, a, has the same thing going on right now. <laughs> Each ethnic group has like their own militia. And then there's the government army. And the government will literally get the militia's help to fight them, to fight some wars with them and shit like that. But then... Bro, how many times do we have to see the same story play out, bro? This can't be legal. I could just join a military today? Miami-based security firm to assassinate Haiti's president, Juvenile Moes. And for the last few years, Wagner Group operated extensively in Libya to disrupt oil like flows today. to European not you, but yes. countries. Why can't and this I is just join? the tip of the iceberg. Wait. Because of stories like this, it's I easy to get join. a bad taste in your mouth when you hear about mercenaries. But some of these guys do truly brave things and risk their life for the greater good. Today, we cover mercenary group Redwater and their CEO, Joey. These guys do a lot of work with three-letter agencies protecting our border and busting sex trafficking operations. They also provide executive protection to people ranging from presidents to pop stars. This is a place that no YouTube channel has gone before, and we go in deep spending 48 hours with these guys and take you into their life. Everything you are about to see- All right, question. Why doesn't the military do this? Right? It's their job. There's not enough people or some shit like that. Like, why, why hire mercenaries if you have the biggest military in the world. It's a question. I'm curious. Politics, legality. So if it's a gray area, you send the mercenaries. But then wouldn't that make it potentially illegal though? Just based on that? 
Therapy are reenactments done with trained professionals and are for entertainment purposes only. Let's dive in. As you can imagine, these mercenaries have very dangerous jobs. Part of the danger of their job is being on the hit list of groups like cartels, gangs, and motorcycle clubs. For this reason, we have to keep their identity anonymous and we'll be blurring their faces. Two things before we get started in this video. First of all, is a thank you. From last week's video, we had a fundraiser for Dr. Scott. Over 1,100 people donated nearly $26,000. That's gonna really help her operation. Let's call her and see what she has to say to you guys. Hello? Dr. Scott, how you doing? I'm good, how are you? Oh man, I am so surprised at how good this has gone. Me too, I'm excited because we really needed it. Keep on making moves and we're very happy we got to meet you. This is amazing, absolutely amazing. I appreciate you. We'll be in touch, okay? Alrighty, take All right. care. Take that's care, so bye-bye. Awesome. It's just cool that we can come together as a community and do stuff like this for people. So that's very special. Also guys, you should know, new big dogs gotta eat sweatshirts. They've hit the website. They look fresh as hell, big back prints. And we got them in blue, and we got them in black. The back is tough, blue. I'm not gonna lie. The RIP Mainstream Media sweatshirts sold out in three days. Get these before they're sold out too. And now guys, let's meet the mercenaries. Somewhere in What's up, Texas. Bro? Up, Good, Good to meet see you, man. man. How you doing, bro? What's, What's up, bro? bro? How hey, you Rob. Doing, man? Nice to meet you, nice bro. Nice to meet you. Hey, Rob! What are we getting ourselves into today? Oh, you guys have no idea, dude. <laughs> you guys are gonna go through some extreme shit. <laughs> I hope you guys are ready. You look a bit Middle Eastern. I am Middle Eastern. Oh, that gotta be. That gotta okay, be. Okay, so today uh, we're against him, yeah? <laughs> I'm on your team. <laughs> what does it mean to be a mercenary? Mercenary can be to protect people, can be to save people, save kids. What are your rates if I want to, like, take somebody out? <laughs> Oh, oh, that's funny. <laughs> oh, I didn't know you could just do that freely in this country. My bad. Oh, my fault. That just, I don't know why this put fear in my heart. <laughs> you brought your guitar to a gunfight? What do you got there? Let's see. You didn't answer shit. the question. Hey, I'm Joey, ex-Army. I was an interpreter. My uh, specialty is PSYOPs and human intel. I'm from Houston, Texas, but I was born in UAE. Whoa, so, how are you doing? Uh, my name is Grim, born here in the US, and I joined the infantry and just kept on shooting my way somewhere, but what, I'm here what, now. What's your specialty? I'm doors. a shooter. <laughs> yeah, I kick doors down. He's a shooter? Bro. What? <laughs> hey, I'm Spooky. I'm from Florida. I was in the army for five years. I was in a reconnaissance squadron. I specialize in medicine. Is that his best? I'm Breeze. Navy, army, 24 years, retired. Been Iraq, Afghanistan, Jordan, Somalia, Pakistan, pretty much everywhere. In Afghanistan, I was a sniper, sniper team leader. I'm 54 years old and I'm from a little town just outside of Dallas. I'm Ghost. I'm from Texas. I specialize in human rec- Hey, I know this nigga. I played in, uh, in Call of Duty. This is the nigga from Call of Duty. Recovery and executive protection. I served in the army as well. How's it going? I'm Maverick. I spent about eight years in the army, infantry, air defense, licensed paramedic, did counter ID. That's a W squad. What the fuck? And just about everything in Iraq. For the first exercise of the day, Redwater is running us through an escape and evade situation. I'm part of Team 1. Our job is to get away from the enemy. Team 2's job is to capture us. In the real world, when you get captured, that can lead to interrogation, torture, and death. Here's how it went. Yes. We're trying to escape from enemy forces. Yes. What do we have to be thinking about before we start this? Try and stay alive as long as you can. In a real life situation, we'd be waiting on an evac. So someone to come and pick us up. The goal is to try and set, survive them, get away from them as long as you can. How about if Let's no one's go, coming? Boys. Oh shit. <laughs> It's all about pacing. If you get tired and they catch you, it's game over. And you still want some energy if you get tired. If you exactly. get caught, huh? What? Which you want some energy if you to get right. caught? Fuck oh, no! Alright, let's get it. I get caught, it's over. Have you guys ever had to run for your life before? In Mexico, I was contracting for an agency that I'm not gonna name. I was unarmed. I didn't have a rescue team. I was in a little town called Tanola in Guadalajara. It's where the Jalisco cartel operate. And I was in an area similar to this where the woods are. The cartel thought I was a DEA agent. My job was to stay alive until a vehicle came and picked me up and took me to the airport. 
and it was very similar to this. But imagine me by myself, unarmed, running in the woods in Mexico. Oh I thought God. I was gonna die, dude. All right, so they gotta think we're gonna go that way. You always wanna think of how they're gonna- Yo, can you imagine the adrenaline? Bro, one time when I was in sixth grade, my mom caught me outside when she was coming home from work. And the adrenaline I had, my nigga, I was in there like you saying both, bro. If my life was on the line on some real shit, yo, I might have infinite stamina, for real. I might dead ass have infinite stamina. You're gonna think and you wanna do the opposite. What? These broken vegetation. Nigga said not Somebody the same. Over that right here too. <laughs> here in the area. Bro. We're coming in this way. Bro, you don't get it, bro. When you got, when you got Ethiopian parents, <laughs> Bro, you can't get caught doing some shit you're not supposed to do. That was my life on the My life felt like it was on the line in the moment, okay? As a kid, bro, it shit felt like it was on the line. I didn't know what type of ass whooping I was about to receive, but I knew it was gonna be different, bro. You just need to be cognizant. They could be on the edge of that field, <laughs> trying to flank around. <laughs> Dude, this reminds me of that Afghanistan. It was very hilly like this. That's why it was so hard for us to survive Afghanistan because the Taliban always had an advantage point on the American soldiers. We'd be in valleys and they'd be up top. They would just <laughs> snipe with them. You want to pick it up? Yeah, we can pick it up a little. Multiple boot prints. You want to go that way and around? I'll go this way and around? Yeah. They're tracking them? Like jackals. Alright, so right here, this looks fresh, right? Mm -hmm. It just rained, and this is all smudged and f***ed up. Surrender is almost certain death or torture, right? Exactly. So it's better to die fighting than to give up. Thank you. A lot of people end up dead because they don't fight to give in. Okay. LRP, bro. This nigga's still running. They said, don't move, nigga. LRP, bro. Hey, Tell me what happened. See, that's more like it. <laughs> you motherfucker. You got him? We got yeah. one runner. One runner? Oh, shit. It's the Mexican. <laughs> Nigga said, no fear, RP. <laughs> oh, he's over there. There we go. <laughs> Uncaptured. Just like that, all it takes is a couple of seconds. One fucking wrong move, and you get caught, and it's game over. So what's going through your head is we're getting yeah. captured right now. So right now in a real life scenario, if you got captured by the enemy, you'd probably would have already pissed your pants, probably shit your pants as well. Cause all you're thinking is you're about to get tortured for hours, possibly days with no one to come and save you. And you're gonna end up probably dead. What's the most common types of torture that's out there right now? Hanging from your arms yeah. to a pipe, a lot of warding, of course, electrocution. How long you hang from a pipe for? Five minutes, sometimes it can go hours, but you start losing circulation in your arms and it's very, very painful. Painful. I've been hung before by my wrist and it's extremely painful dude. Tommy, we got captured dude. So when you hear talk about torture, you might be wondering what laws and rules govern the behavior of mercenaries. Under international law, torture is undoubtedly illegal. But picture this scenario. You are a mercenary that just busted a man running a sex trafficking operation. This trafficker knows where dozens of kids are being kept, but he refuses to tell you. If to I'm torturing him. I'm torturing that nigga bro. In this context, we will start with waterboarding. We will proceed to pull off his fingernails, and then we're gonna take a hammer and some nails, and we're actually gonna start smashing into his fingernails where all his nerves are. Upon which, we will probably hang him for approximately an hour, and if we don't get an answer by then, we'll repeat the process for round two. Torturing this man saves the lives of dozens of kids. Is it then ethical? Hmm. By international law, mercenaries, if it. captured, Fuck are it. not recognized as prisoners of war. What that means is the Geneva Convention that mandates that a prisoner of war is to be treated humanely, allowed to communicate with relatives, and given adequate food and shelter. These measures do not apply to a mercenary. If caught, they are at the mercy of the people who catch them. Which means if they fail their mission in GTA. Well, yeah, in this hypothetical that I'm a fucking mercenary, guys. I'm a streamer. I'm sitting on my ass watching 
a video. Obviously, I'm not gonna. I'm not in a position to do this. <laughs> <laughs> there are no man's land, which makes this a very, very dangerous job. And the more I dug, the more I found a common trend. Governments often hire mercenaries to do the dirty work they find too risky. That way, if the mission fails or something goes wrong, the government that hired the mercenary group can deny responsibility of any wrongdoing. That's Just recently, crazy. this has happened countless times in Ukraine. The Wagner Group has ran risky and deadly operations, and the Russian government is able to say they had nothing to do with it. In this interrogation training exercise, we simulate what would happen if we got captured. I'm sorry. Hey guys, this normally works in like the hood. About to simulate I don't know torture? if it'll work with you guys, but you just let us go. <laughs> Is it possible to bribe your way? Nigga said W cover up RPing as a streamer. <laughs> Bro, shut up. Any situations you think? Well, depending on the country. <laughs> that yeah, you're depending right, on the country you're let's in. Let's say you're in the jungles like, of South America. Yeah, money talk. Haiti, South America, yeah, Africa. Like Everyone here in America looks at bribery as such an evil thing. When really, in third world countries, it's a way of life. That's first in 24 hours, I would say, of being captured mm -hmm. determines a lot. Keep your mouth shut and walk. The cavalry coming. Stop through. talking. Keep walking. Don't give a shit. Stop talking. We would have previous codes before we got captured, right? Skies blue. Now they're actually RPing right now. Hey, do hey military niggas in the chat say I? If you found a military in the chat, say I. Uh, to the niggas that's actually like uh on the field and shit like that, getting some minutes in the game. Do y'all have to RP these moments too? I imagine you do, cause it's better you have an idea of what's to come. Do you RP these moments too? And like, how real are they? Like. I see videos of people actually getting hit with tear gas and shit like that. Are you actually going to get tortured and shit? Or, or is it just war games? Uh, assume I don't know what that is since <laughs> I've never been. Not all the way. I've never been captured. <laughs> don't say anything. Why are you giving us your input? <laughs> I don't... I don't... <laughs> Blue probably means, hey, in five minutes, let's run for it. When you're interrogating people, what are you looking for? Body language. Yes, behavioral Behavior. cues, inflections, changes in the voice, eye movement, movement, twitching. When you're talking to someone, if they're looking up and to the left constantly and the taking line. a second before they answer, they're, they're accessing line. the creative portions of their brain, which, which means they're, they're making lying. it up. All right, so here's the scenario. Me and Arab are the, the prisoners, and these are the interrogators. Hey, what the f is that? It's called a f N26. I call it my shock baby. When people don't want to give me answers, you hold it to specific body parts. They don't want to give answers, you fucking hitting them with this little bad boy, man, and you'll get answers pretty quickly. Sit in the shack. You and you two. Tell me the fucking truth. Sit down, Listen up. It's all good. It's all good. It's all Hey, hey. You gotta stop giving us the answers. Yo, we're gonna start torturing you guys don't say shit in about five minutes i'm gonna start pulling fingers off and drowning you you start telling us who you work for we're gonna start torturing you guys now well, we work for ourselves bro we work i'm, we're not, not, with you. I'm not gonna lie that's a bad press chat right come on nigga not menacing enough be a little mysterious don't just tell me what you're gonna do just say i'll be back in five minutes you got five minutes to think about what the fuck you're gonna say to me and leave nigga let this nigga panic Feel me? Come on, bro. This is a weird press, bro. This is a weird... Take it from me. All right? The, the streamer in this situation. All right? I, I used to be the gun plug back in D10, V3. So I, I have some experience getting kidnapped. And I always held it down, chat. I always held it down, bro. You? Give me some f***ing answers we're, now. We're YouTube journalists. What do you want from us? What do you want to know? Listen, motherfucker. <laughs> you want to get f***ing no, no, I, don't, I, don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. Give me some f***ing answers. Who do you snitch? work for? <laughs> I work for you, dude. I, I swear on my life. With all that water in you. Please do not tase me in the shoulder. F***ing tell me I now. swear I'm telling you the truth. You're gonna hey, listen, listen, listen we're mother. journalists. You're going to give us f***ing answers or what? No, I, I gave you the answers. I already Give us f***ing answers, motherfucker. I already told you what we know. Call your mother. Nah, nigga dropping cool pack. Nigga dropping cool water on him. <laughs> Yo, you see, thank you for the kid. You give us answers now! In about five seconds, your lungs are gonna start collapsing. They're gonna fill with fing water, and you're gonna start fing losing your fing brain. Better fing talk to hey, us. Hey, hey, hey. Put it on, Henry! Give us the fing answers, motherfucker! You like that? Give us the answers that we want! Give us the fing answers that we want, motherfucker! Tell us what we want! We're journalists! <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, this nigga broke 
in 10 seconds, bro. Hey, Tommy, you are not real, bro. Come on, my nigga. Hey, I'm hey. sorry, but I'm a f***ing spot. Take it out, Maverick. Put two in his f***ing head. Hey, no, I can tell you. Tommy! 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 He's dead! Yes. Tommy, you are dying for the cause! You're gonna be next, motherfucker! And cut. That was not even 1% of what a real scenario would be like, right? No, it would be way more f intense. We actually took it very easy on you guys. Me and Maverick are professionals when it comes to this kind of thing, and uh, we knew your limits, so. But in, in a real life situation, it would be way intense, way more crazier. They would definitely give up answers. How fast do people usually break? And in real life, it's uh, actually way different. It depends on the person. The whole goal is, as soon as they enter, they see uh, all the tools, and they start giving answers. You want to do as least as possible to them and get the answers. And do they get after or you? It all depends. So Arab, I know we barely, barely even got a taste of what this is really like, but what was your review of getting waterboarded? Honestly, that shit sucks. In a real life scenario, you would use a gallon at least or a bucket. You would use water. a thicker material than a t-shirt yeah, too. Yeah, t-shirt, yeah. So like the water towel. retains more. Now we're gonna hit the range, shoot some guns, and learn some t All right, these niggas actually like, for sure are criminals, for sure, because why are they giving us tips and tricks on how to waterboard properly? Broski. Tactics. Let's go, baby. Woo! I was gonna go to the Afghanistan and push you out last minute, but is it actually legitimate that hey, you could potentially go to Afghanistan and rescue someone? Is that something that you guys would do? Yes, any country. Right now, this is only eight of us. There's a total of 30. There's more too that we don't advertise on the website for legal reasons. The rest of our team right now, most of them are on assignments. How much does that cost? If I get captured in Afghanistan and I wanna hire a team of what, six of you? We'll sit down, we'll talk with them, and then we agree on, on a price. But that's how it usually goes, man. Obviously, we're not gonna charge as much for a little girl than like a politician that we know is bad and he shouldn't have been there but he's still okay. that's okay. that's a different story okay. you know? it's 50 to a hundred thousand dollars you're thinking usually like your beginning stages because it's gonna take a few grand just to even get the ball rolling so an operation could be anywhere between like 200 to 500 thousand on average if it's a deep place like big politician it could cost a million and most of your work now what are the, the majority that's not that bad it's actually not that bad and before everyone just calls me rich I'm just saying it's like Eight niggas is about to go and risk their lives in Afghanistan, potentially, for a million dollars? I don't know why in my head I just thought it was going to be like a price, like a ridiculous ass price. Some shit, you know, like, you know when, you know when they're like, we made a new BFD, a B-52 bomber, it cost 32 mil billion. You know, they be throwing around big ass numbers and shit like that. Damn, that's not that bad. That means that, like, if you're rich enough, you could really save yourself. I don't know how you get in contact with these niggas, but. Wow. Majority of your clients look like. Pretty much anybody, as long as you're not a criminal or a drug dealer. CEOs, public figures, actors, musicians. Yeah, but as a good chunk of what you do right now on the border, busting traffickers. I can't comment on that. But I can say publicly, I have worked on a contract, was on the Tijuana border. It was affiliated with a three letter agency and we saved 1,500 kids. This was about two summers ago. Missing. What the hell is this? The T-1000. I uh, am a dealer for Richmond Tactical, and I'm also a federal firearms dealer, Brazos River Firearms. This is one of our personal models. You're not gonna see another one like this anywhere. This almost looks like a rapper or cartel type shit. How about badass cowboy shit? Badass cowboy <laughs> shit? <laughs> wow. When you're Yo, that's like getting a brand new Lamborghini in the gun world, huh? That nigga was just rocking a Lamborghini in the gun world, bro. That ass, fully modded, fully kitted, nice, beautiful, wide body, real negative offset on the wheels, HREs, feel me? Carbon fiber everywhere. That's what he's holding right now. I could tell, bro. I don't know, but I could tell.
you guys are operating, what, what are some essentials you need to be packing? It varies based on the mission. There's something called covert and overt. On a protection detail, I'm gonna be dressed like my client or like the area I'm in. If I'm if I'm protecting you know, a rapper and everyone around me is wearing hoodies and baggy pants and tennis shoes, that's what I'm gonna be wearing. With the CEO, I'm gonna be wearing a button shirt, you know, nice slacks, good shoes, you know, whatever I can Creases. to blend into my environment. If that's more of a covert. In an overt like this, plates are showing, I've got mags. Exposed. You know, it, it all depends. Like just recently I went to LA, Atlanta, Philadelphia, and then New York with this client that I work for. Okay. He's a rapper. His father is a very high profile fashion mogul. So you're a bit not gonna lie, he actually narrowed it down a lot for us. <laughs> How many fashion moguls have sons that's big ass rappers? I'm pretty sure we can, if we do enough research, we can get to the bottom of that right there. In a situation where you thought you were going to die? Yeah, I actually, that's why I got the Purple Heart. I got blown up. I got my my right knee completely blown off. I took a piece of shrapnel into my arm. It cut my bicep, came out the top of my shoulder, and I caught a piece in my head. Where was this? Afghanistan. This is why I created Redwater. Uh, I wanted a place for all of us to feel like a family. You know, a lot of veterans, when they get out, the cops, when they retire, you know, they lose that brotherhood, and that's what I wanted. I wanted to build a brotherhood. Do you think Mercenaries has a good or bad rap. Movies make mercenaries look bad, I think, in my opinion, because they make it look all about yeah. But there's way more than that, man. We all have families. We all have lives. You know, we love, we bleed, and we laugh, you know, as, as, as corny as that sounds. We're human at the end of the day. People in the places you're operating, they also have uh, families and they laugh, right? So from my perspective, it's the same perspective as the guy shooting it. It's either me or him, dude. Whoever acts on it first is the one that stays alive. And this right. is the way it is, man. War isn't fair. Joey said war isn't fair, and he's right. Throughout the ages, people have used mercenaries to try what? and tip the battlefield into their face. Favor. The earliest evidence of mercenaries being used to help win wars dates back to the times of the Egyptians. When you read through history, you'll read about Swiss, French, English mercenaries sprinkled throughout wars in the Middle Ages fighting for kings and dukes. And in fact, for the United States to gain independence from the British Empire during the Revolutionary War, we had to overcome some 30,000 odd German mercenaries called Hessians that the Brits hired to try and crush us. When I imagine how scary and dangerous it must be to be in war, whether it be with a sword in the Middle Ages or with the high-powered bombs and guns of today, it it amazes me that people are willing to become mercenaries. Knowing that if I ever get stuck in a dangerous place, that Redwater would launch a mission to come and get me and might be my only hope for survival, it makes me appreciate that these men are brave enough to do what they do. And folks, remember, like any profession, you have your good and bad people. Whether we talk about priests, do Wait. Never mind. Doctors, businessmen, or mercenaries, there's good and bad in all professions. Well, shall we get shooting? Let's do it, man. Hey, three cheers for Hillary Clinton. Session. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we do it in Texas, baby! Has anyone ever ran out of ammo in a combat situation? Yes. Luckily, there was a helicopter that came in and, and took out the targets <laughs> that we were shooting at. We did a raid on a house of a, a high-value target. Before we hit the house, we had uh, artillery guys shot up loom rounds because it was like 2 o'clock in the morning. They shot loom rounds over the house before we hit it. What is and that? the shells from the loom rounds, the guy had marijuana fields all around his, his house. Well, the shells landed in the, the marijuana fields and they caught it on fire. After we got him out, and got him back and we were waiting to get picked up we were all sitting by the field and the, all the smoke from the field we were all like bunched up right behind by where the, all the smoke was coming in and we got on the radio we're like hey you might want to wake the cooks up man we're gonna be a little, gonna be a little hungry <laughs> how long did it take from when you ran out of ammo to you got rescued oh, like 10 minutes. no the scary part is they're so relaxed about the fact that they just killed a man and burned his whole house down <laughs> they were they were they were too relaxed. This is like, hey, just kill. How many people you killed today? Two? <laughs> killed two niggas today? How about you, man? You ain't killed nobody today? Damn, man. Nigga, like, it's so normal. It's like me going to eat food, bruh. They don't even have names for them. Cat Williams had a bit in one of his specials <laughs> where he's like, <laughs> anyway, let me not read. <laughs> Yo, they just be giving niggas names, though. Like, they're not people. They're targets, they're insurgents, they're, they're not humans though, they're just, they're other things, but they're not human, bro. Them niggas, three enemy insurgents. 
Cool. Okay, that's nice. So what makes your job worth it? Like what, say, I'm gonna put myself in the line of duty and do something dangerous and be a mercenary. What makes you say you're gonna do that? Protecting other people is something that I've always wanted to do as a child. Uh, family, friends, and all that, so. Yo, chat, imagine being sniped, real quick. Imagine being sniped. That's the worst way to go out. Really? You have no clue anything is going on at all. And in, in a moment, you lose your life. Yo, getting sniped is the worst. At least if a nigga blink you from right here, you saw the gun, you had a chance to react, you fired back, you airballed, you died. Feel me? A sniper? Nigga is all the way in a different continent. He's adjusting bullet drop ratio. Sh nigga, shoot with a 50x scope. You don't see it coming. Boom. You don't even know how you die. Deadass, you would have no clue how you die. I would be happy. Okay, traitor. No cap. Uh, no joke. Jokes aside, actually receive help, bro. Go to, go to therapy if you need to. You need someone to talk to, my nigga. There's no way you should be gleeful about the idea of death. I'm being, I'm being so dead ass too, bro. It's better to talk to somebody, my nigga. That's a weird thought. I'm being serious. Just extending that after my military service and being able to do that as a career is, is fulfilling to me. I think all of us are doing this because we want to help good people. What is this patch mean? Bad people. My message is, you know, yeah. What? We want to help good people. What is this patch mean? Bad people. My message is, you know, yeah, it's cool, cool shooting you guns. You can't good see people. it. Where is this patch mean? Bad people. It's right there, bitch. Fucking me, you can't see people. it. My message is, you know, yeah, it's cool shooting guns and shit like that, but we need to come together in, in this country. Right now, we're very divided. You're part of the family now, brother, so thank you for coming, Tommy. Hey, well, I can't rescue you if, if you get stuck somewhere bad, but these guys can. We got you. Call us. Contact Redwater. Anywhere, anytime. All this Get ready. For this next exercise, we simulate what would happen if I were to get blown up by an IED. Here's how you tackle something what? like that. There's a sketchy Lebanese guy. He's a known terrorist. Just watch out, watch out. We gotta hit this mission. We gotta go. Oh shit! It's RP. Uh, it's, a uh, it's a skit. Medic! Skit. I'm not gonna make it. All right. My leg. Oh, missing leg. All right. I should not Right. Die. So no, because right now I'm putting this tourniquet oh, on. Putting this tourniquet on for you really quick. This is gonna cut off the blood flow to your entire leg. Well, everything beneath. Three fifteen. All right, we're gonna mark that so that we can make sure we know when the tourniquet was put on. And now we're gonna finish with the blood sweep. We're gonna check this leg up here. Nothing. Now we're gonna check your groin. Oh god. Nothing. Okay. We're gonna. <laughs> You just surprised him with a, a groin check? <laughs> Nigga caught a surprise groin check. Hey man, no need, bro. This is a skit. <laughs> like, you ain't gotta grab my shit, my nigga. Gonna check this leg up here. Nothing, never gonna check your groin. <laughs> groin. Oh god. Nothing, okay. We're gonna check the arm. That has a little bit of blood, let me see. All right, I'm okay. ticklish. So a chest seal is anything that's non-porous. You can like use this glove as a chest seal right here. So I'm just gonna slap that over the wound, right? And that's gonna create that pressure inside his chest. That's When the chest goes like this, that means it's paradoxical movement and there's penetration to the chest wall. So you gotta put something on top to keep the pressure the same. So now I'm gonna go into circulation. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check his pulse. Make sure he has a pulse. All right, and depending on what type of pulse it is, if it's, you know, strong, if it's weak, thready, if it's fast, it's gonna- Yo, am I the only nigga that can't feel my pulse through my wrist? How y'all niggas do that? I can feel it on my chest. I can't feel my pulse on my wrist. How y'all just do this and you can feel your pulse? It's not because I'm fat. <laughs> why y'all always default to that? I could be like, yo guys, I had a bad day. You're fat agent, that's why you had a bad day. How about try not being fat? Oh, uh, that's why you're being sad, that's why you're so fucking miserable. Bro, it has nothing to do with that. Check my neck. I can't do it on my neck neither. What if my... It does? It's true? No, it's not, Chad. I've been all different weight sizes. I've never been able to do that. Bro, y'all just want that to be the case. It has nothing to do with that. To determine what type of treatments I can give him. Now we're gonna roll into <laughs> our uh, circulation. But I'm gonna hit the uh, IV, get Man. venual access, and then uh, I'm gonna go into my next secondary assessment, which would be uh, I'd push pain management. Here you go, baby. Put it in his hand. I'm gonna tape it to his hand. If I had someone else, I would have them stand behind, or I'd sit him up against some type of object. I could even pick him up like this. You can go dead weight. 
I can still treat him with whatever I need to do. I can still have access to all this, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull him backwards a little bit, and it's going to rock, and that's going to lock his knees out, and that's going to allow me to stand him up. So watch this. Ready? From here, I can transition into any type of hold. I can pick him up. I can move him around. In a real-life scenario, that would take so much more time, and there would be so much more in-depth. Like, I would actually have to, you know, like, put a chest seal on him and... Whoa, somebody said you gotta go right above your collarbone. I can feel it. Oh my God. Under your jaw socket? No. You know, monitor to see if I have to burp it every couple minutes. The tourniquet kind of hurts it. Bro, you don't feel yeah, your pulse under your for the jaw. Ball. Why'd you alu akbar, man? I, I, I didn't mean for you to have to go through the pain. I meant to just Thank you. A real trauma lane, it's way more in depth. It's obviously gonna take a lot longer than like five minutes. There's obviously a lot more that goes into it. How did the tourniquet feel? It hurt. I was looking at you like, no way you have it on too. Like, I, it was almost like an impossible pain. Like, I was like, no, take it off. I was like, no, no, there's no way. The people that well, say mercenaries are bad guys, get rid of them. What do you say to that? Who are you gonna call when uh, the gang members start taking over your neighborhoods? And the cops are getting defunded already, so just keep keep thinking about that guys and they're already overworked they're already overworked so who's gonna come and save you all right well, now? I guarantee you we have a faster response time than they ever will yeah and we understand that there's ethical you know issues to <laughs> man I don't trust no nigga when they say ethical like this <laughs> man there's not a nigga on the planet I would trust that has to do this when he says ethical fuck no bro faster response time than they ever will yeah and we understand that there's ethical you know, issues surrounding having private military operating in the continental United States. But that is also where we need to be redefined differently. We're not mm -hmm. running high risk operations like we would in Iraq right. as a PMC. Yeah. We would be assisting police officers in capacity yeah. of security officers, and not we, combat operations in capacity of soldiers. We love doing what we did with you guys today, training people. So if civilians out there want to come train with Redwater, reach out to our website. We'd love to teach a class and travel, you know, throw a class and teach you guys everything. For the last phase of training, we're gonna go out into the town and get a look into what it's like if you're a celebrity or a rock star with executive protection. So let's hit the streets. That's tough, actually. In this next exercise, we have Arab pretend to be a Saudi Arabian prince visiting America <laughs> on a business deal. We take him through a crowded food court at a Houston mall and let Redwater show us their skills. Let's see what happens. Yo, he rented a Ferrari for the bit? Nah, that's dedication. Dedication. Yo, Wavy, thank you for the 10 gifted subs, brother. <laughs> Wavy, appreciate you, dog. Hey, Wavy, I see you. Um, who's in costume yesterday? Oh, oh, my memory sucks. Appreciate you, bro. Thank you for the 10 gifted subs, my nigga. Today, we're gonna to be protecting our Lebanese Prince client. We're gonna show you our protocol when escorting celebrities, CEOs, clients, whenever they come into town, what our protocol is from A to Z. How many men do we have on this case? Three with me and then three that we cannot see. That are blending in. Yes, exactly. Uh, uh sent me with a 25. <laughs> Gifted subs, bro. Send me, send me, send me, what the fuck? Hey, hold on, chat. I need all y'all to put some W's in the chat right now. Show the niggas send me some love, bro. I appreciate the 25. Damn, I'm getting thirsty. Damn, I'm getting thirsty. Hey, Sammy, I appreciate you, broski. Thank you so much, man. Thank you so much. W send me in the chat, bro. W send me in the chat. And that's that way we usually do it. Because we always want cover if something happens. Okay, so what are we currently looking for right now? Well, obviously, we're always going to attract attention to the client. You want to see people that usually have extra clothing that doesn't fit the climate of the environment, like a heavy jacket or something. Usually, that's a sign that something's off and maybe carrying a weapon or something, especially if the client has a high threat on you. Do you have a high threat level on you right now, Habibi? I am in Arab in Texas, brother. Everybody around me here thinks I'm probably wearing vests. And you'll notice, you'll notice there's an agent on each side, one behind you, and then one always look to the left. Looking up for anything. Man, nigga, that's bait as fuck. 
<laughs> bro, you mean to tell me that nigga walking side by side with me on the next aisle? Bro, man, if I see that, bro, there's no way I don't think there's some shit going on. I'm not going to see that and think, ooh, innocent enough. No chance, bro. Maybe if they were tailing, like, further back. But the nigga right he's to the left of you. They tell me in America you have good uh, hamburger. Very good. Can we try good American hamburger? The most excellent hamburgers, your majesty. I will be happy to buy you a hamburger. Are you nervous at all right now? No, not nervous. I have good security detail. Top security worldwide. What are you in the mood for right now, sir? Are you are you hungry or would you like to go shopping? I would like to buy maybe a Louis Vuitton purse for my... <laughs> My wife, Kifak. Do we have agents on the, the top? Remember I said there's three that are undercover? Because we need guys that have the yes. eagle eye, right? Oh. Don't commit haram. Oh, Close your eyes. Brother. Close your eyes. No, but my wife wears this under her hijab. Does she really? Oh, don't you... Don't you dare what? think of my wife like that. <laughs> Yo, why did he actually slap this nigga, bro? Hey, get this. <laughs> she really? Oh, don't you... Don't you dare what? think of my wife like that. Hey, get this guy out of here. You can't have him over here, sir. Hey, 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 come on, sir. We got you. And that's exactly how it would happen. Usually with Yo. clients, ones that you'd give them one or two warnings, they don't go away. You nigga, nigga got convicted of having the thought. <laughs> You have the second agent behind, grab him oh, and take him away. Prince, sorry for my behavior, I apologize. Good. In food court areas, for some reason, people get attacked a lot. Because you never know who's sitting down and eating. Are you mostly looking for men or women to everything? Usually rival countries will send women. What would you like to eat, sir? I want hamburger, like American hamburger. Chick -fil -A, sir. This Chick-fil-A do it for you, Prince. What is Chick-fil-A? This restaurant. Nigga, that's chicken. He just said hamburger. Tommy, tea up, bro. This is good? Very good. What's your name? My name is Abdullah Muhammad al Salis. Nice to meet you. What's his name? No, in my country we shake. Shake. She does she just not want to give up her drink. Tough shake, tough shake in my country. Give him a good shake. <laughs> Abdullah Muhammad al Salis. What's your name? Kelsey. Kelsey. Kelsey, it's nice to and meeting you. What are you doing over here? Me, I'm visiting America first time. I'm exploring the culture. They tell me this is number one chicken in America. I believe that. It's true. We need to get you out of here safely. Let's go. Kelsey, nice to meet you, Kelsey. <laughs> Wait, Ram, shut the fuck up, man. First time I am trying the the chicken sandwich. They tell me number one in America is Chick Fil A. The number one is good. You know this reminds me of chat. Hey, you've reached the hot sex line. How are you doing today? <sighs> Sorry. I'm just coming up with random things to tell these spam callers. I want to make them a little uncomfortable, bro. Them niggas keep spamming my phone, making me uncomfortable. I'm just getting back at them. Don't mind me. Like spicy, not spicy, regular. I will try whatever you think is best, but no biggles. American drink? It's a uh, Arnold Palmer. It's a mix of the lemonade and the tea. Arnold Palmer? I'm not a Palmer. Nah, Arnold Palmer. Ah, oh, this He's... is the name of him. Yes. Jason, my brother. Yes, sir. It, oh, I love America. Everybody in America is like this. Right now, we try American Palmer. America makes very good bomber. America is very famous for fast food. This is the stuff that makes you obese. And we proudly serve it to you as a guest. Because we spent too much time in here, it's probably better to exit the area because we're attacked. Yeah, move tag, move tag, move tag, move tag. Too much attention, it's a, there's a higher possibility of him being attacked or harassed. So okay. At that point, Habibi. go move location. Habibi, you're wandering like a lost goat. We must get Habibi. you out of here. There is a beautiful Latina woman behind me. No, no, that's Haram. You have four wives, let's keep him moving. Habibi, four wives in the middle and east, but in the worldwide, I can have as many as I want. I'm a brin. No, that's haram, sir. Let's get you out of here. We were getting a lot of stares in the food court, and Joey received intel that our men were in the mall looking for the prince to take him out. So he. What? Wait, hold on. Food court, and Joey received intel that our men were in the mall looking for the prince to take him out. I hope they're not about to do a military drill in the mall in the mall right now. I feel like they're gonna do it, but I hope that's not what they're about to do. <laughs> so he made the call to extract his client. Extract the principal out. Let's get out of here. Would you like uh, an American uh, waffle fry? Oh my God, this is delicious. Thank you, Habibi. This entrance right now is when people usually get attacked. So at this point, I will advance with the other agent. Look to our left, look to our right. Thank you. Shukran. 
just me and him in the car. How do you think the mission went? Good. I did not notice the three other guys in the mall at all that were shadowing us, did you? I'm not looking for anything. I have my security detail, they do the work. Me, I have make friend with Jason and he give me Kelsey. bomber. We are trying here an American chicken burger. I don't know why they call sandwich, but we will see how it tastes. Oh, wow. Juicy. For the Every food in America is like this. There is so much oil. I think it went great. Got him out securely and safely and efficiently. Bro, like, but they draw so much attention, though, and that attention is going to create problems, too. It's just too much attention, bro. It's too much attention. So, who's the success? It was a pleasure doing your it business. It was a pleasure, brother. Red Water will always be here for you, We sir. shall work Anytime again. you want. We'll take it from here, okay? Hey, Thank you so much. Man. Thank you, Tommy. Good day, brother. Good job. We'll see yep. you guys. Yeah, I don't Appreciate really think you, we brother. Need guys. I mean, that, did that really help? I mean. Whoa, 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 whoa. What? No, what? no. Habibi! Habibi! No! No! Go! <laughs> Truck, buddy. Can't get you out the side. This shit bulletproof. This shit bullet resistant. Hey, Tommy W video, man. Oh, so you like the video? Boom. You, you're gonna like that one too, man. Go ahead, just. Bro, click the link. What that? Bro, that's what I be saying. Like.